Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Surprise! I am here to do a Tip Tuesday video for you. I know that I said that I am going to be taking a, a few month hiatus from Tip Tuesdays while we work on moving into a new home. But today I just felt like I really needed to get on here and show you guys a tip because I am seeing so many posts on social media about how to wear a wig in the summer. I know uh, summer wig wearing is extremely challenging. I face the same challenges. So I'm here to encourage you today with a Tip Tuesday. So if you would like to learn how to wear wigs with a visor, which is such a good summer option and I'll tell you why, stick around for the rest of this video. All right, so I have uh, a link in the description to this specific visor. You can use any visor that you want, but as I'm showing you how to wear wigs like this, I want to tell you why I think this visor or ones like it are super helpful. So I've owned this visor now for a few summers and it's doing great. And actually for one summer, this is my second summer, so over a year, and it's really holding up really well. So I'll show you why I love this one, but let's first talk about wig wearing challenges in the summer. Some things you may be experiencing right now or that you may experience if you aren't yet wearing wigs. I know I have a lot of new subscribers who are just starting to consider wearing wigs and maybe you're worried about wearing wigs in the summer. So I just wanna kind of talk a little bit about that because it, uh, it, the challenges are real and we have to find ways to overcome them. So wearing wigs in the summer can be really hot and the reason for that is you're putting something on your head similar to a hat and we've been told since we were little to wear hats in the winter because it keeps your body heat in. Well, it does the same thing in the summer and so you will actually want that body heat to be able to escape and help to cool you. So putting a wig on your head can really make that challenging. Another challenge with wearing wigs in the summer especially if you're going to be outside for long periods of time where the sun is beating down is having sun beating on your face and in your eyes and I experienced this one in particular because I have super sensitive eyes to the sun and I always have to have sunglasses on me I, I really cannot I can really not see in bright sunlight it hurts my eyes so badly and they water so badly I have to have sunglasses and I find if I'm going to be outside for a period of time and there's no shade or break from the overhead sun even sunglasses aren't enough for me. That's where baseball caps used to come in. And because of wigs, I really rarely wear baseball caps anymore, even though it is possible, and I will do another video on that, but I already get so hot in wigs, I really don't need to add another whole layer over the top of my head, which is why visors can be such a great option. I didn't really do visors, and show you a little bit in the back, I didn't really do visors pre-wigs because I, my hair was so thin, it looked horrible with visors. I would suffer with a baseball cap, even though if they, I, they made me so miserable in the summer because they would make me so hot because my bio hair was so bad. So I'm actually really thrilled to have this as an option at this point. And so let's just get right to wearing them. So I have on my head right now, Tress Allure Charlotte. So I have a review of Charlotte on my channel. You can go look at it. It's in, um, I'm forgetting the color right now, but uh, Dark Amber HL. And so you can go see the review, full review of Charlotte. But Charlotte is a great wig. I'm gonna do a spin for you. To wear with a visor in the summer because number one, her curls allow you a lot of styling flexibility and I'll be taking these clips out so you can see what she looks like in all her big full glory but also because she is short and so you keep the hair off your neck but with the curls and waves she's short enough and stylish enough that she really hides the fact that you have a wig on so let's look at that again look at how she hides the cap so you cannot tell 
that I have a wig on, but it also doesn't look silly. It looks just stylish and it looks purposeful. And that's one of the things I love about Charlotte. If you are not a short wig wearer, if you don't own any short wigs, I encourage you, I strongly encourage you to invest in at least one short style. There are so many applications to wearing short wigs. I, I guarantee you, if you have one in your wardrobe, you will find times when it will be invaluable to you. I personally like the curlier short styles or somewhat curly because I think it gives you some more flexibility than the straight styles, but whatever you're comfortable with, they're awesome in the summer, they're awesome with headbands, they're awesome with turtlenecks and scarves in the winter. There are so many reasons a short style would be great for you. I got this Charlotte two years ago, early, early in my wig wearing journey, and she was too poofy and full for me. And I actually put a video out on social media asking people if I should sell her because I just was struggling to wear her. I discovered that I could wear her with a headband, and that was my go-to for a long time with this one. Now I'm more comfortable with wigs, and I can wear Charlotte down, up, full, any way I want to, but that takes time. So Charlotte is a great one for some flexibility. So what I have done here is I've put up some claw clips. I have a Tip Tuesday on using claw clips to reduce poof in a wig. You must watch that video if you've not seen it. It is amazing how just a few strategically placed little claw clips make a wig that you can't wear because it feels too poofy manageable and it works with straight and curly styles. I put this one like this so that I could show Charlotte a little tamed. But let me take the claw clips out and show you what she looks like when she's not clipped down. And I am gonna take this off and I'm going to show you two more wigs so that you can watch me style them. I really want you to feel encouraged and know that this is not difficult. Um, for us style challenged girls, this is, this is doable for you, I promise. If it's doable for me, it's doable for you. So Charlotte can get some really good volume and if you're comfortable with volume, you don't have to put the claw clips in her. You can just leave her messy and she looks so good. But I know for some of you, even a short wig is gonna be a stretch. So doing this uh, might be too much for you. You can clip her as much or as little as you want. You don't have to put a whole bunch of claw clips in. You can actually just kind of pull her back into one little clip there's just the, really the sky is the limit for what you can do with her. All right, so let me take this off. One of the other good things about Charlotte is that she is a basic cap wig. I'm getting a little hot and sweaty in my bathroom as you who followed me for a while know it starts to get really hot in here. Um, this will be one of the last videos I ever film in this bathroom, but um, she is a basic cap wig. So what's really good about that is, number one, the price point. She's gonna be cheaper than a wig with features. And if you're just gonna wear her in styles, bandanas, headbands, maybe visors, if this is a, a something you'd like to try, you might not wanna spend a lot of money on a wig. You're also not going to be able to see those cap features in many of these styles. So having a basic cap wig can be really helpful. Um, I also think sometimes people find lace fronts itchy and you are going to get hot and sweaty likely. If you're a sweater like I am, you'll probably get hot and sweaty. And so not having cap features that might make you itchy could also be a helpful thing. So that was Charlotte. So let's walk through the styling. And again, it's, uh, I always struggle to do this on video because I feel like I have to go fast and I try not to look in my mirror over here too much, so it can be a real challenge. But let's just go to another wig. So I have here, let me see, which one do I want to do? I'm going to do Jules. Um, she's a similar style as Charlotte as far as curl, and I'll show you what I did. And so Jules is one that has a lace front, but no monofilament. And so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put your wig on. Now, you can do that a couple of things. You can adhere your wig with 
it stays with got to be with tape if you want extra security i find that once the ba the headband the visor is on it stays really securely uh so i probably for just a normal day if i'm not going to be i always use the amusement park as the example if i'm not going to be someplace where it's going to i'm going to be worried about my wig flying off maybe you're going boating um in those cases you might want to adhere with something but you don't necessarily have to. Another thing you can do is wear your wig with a wig grip. I personally tried that. I did this style the other day with Night by Ellen Villa, and I found the bulk from the wig grip, the wig, and the visor too much for me. But I personally don't like the bulk a wig grip gives in the first place. But it is an option if you want to put a wig grip on. That could be helpful. So let's look at this. Um, I'm just going to do it with nothing right now. So first of all, you're going to put your wig, you can, well, you can do it one of two ways. Depends on what kind of visor you have. Let me talk about this visor briefly. And like I said, I linked it in the description. This visor, it has a Velcro adjuster on it. That is why I love this visor because I can, and it's a little thicker on the end. So if I'm careful, it won't fall out of the adjuster which is super helpful for me because if it does, I have trouble getting it. I don't have great flexibility in my shoulders from rheumatoid arthritis and things. So it can be hard for me to reach back and do things on the back of my head. So having this stay in there is really helpful. If you have a visor that doesn't adjust, it's going to be just a little more challenging for you to do this. It still can be done, but I really recommend an adjustable visor if you can find one. And again, I'll link this one specifically in the description. So what I do, and you could do this before you put the wig on, um, but I like to put, depending on the style, this works really well um, with these styles here, is I like to put it over my head, and then I like to pull it up because I'm gonna, I'm gonna seat it, and then I'm gonna hold onto the wig, and I'm gonna seat it, I'm getting it over the ear tabs right now, just underneath the hairline. Because this is gonna sit here, you're not gonna see that hairline anyway. So then I reach back, and I pull just a little bit, a little bit of the hair out before I tighten it. And now I'm going to tighten it and I'm lifting this hair up and I'm tightening it underneath and then I'm dropping it down below. That didn't work very well. Let me do it again. I also sometimes have trouble with my fingers from my lovely arthritis. All right, so now let me just get that situated again. So I've gotten it tightened. And now I'm going to tug my wig back down into place in the back, and I'm going to be pulling more hair out, but that's kind of where I start. Now, I just want to start pulling some of this hair out around it so that I get good coverage, but also a good silhouette. Now, I got to look in the mirror here. So that side looks good. I think I need to pull a little more hair out right here because I can feel the cap, but I can't feel any wig. So you can use your fingers if you want to, or if you happen to have a comb with a rat tail in, you can do that and just kind of reach under and just get a little bit of hair out. Again, the goal is just to kind of hide, hide the, the cap of the wig. And so getting just a little bit of hair out underneath is gonna do that. Now, if you're comfortable with full curly styles, that's it. That's all you have to do. Let's see how this looks. I think it looks great. And now you can see with Jewels, this is Jewels, I don't know if I said that already, Henry Margot Jewels, um, it's a little longer. So you're having some hair on your neck. Depending on how uncomfortable you get when you're hot, how sweaty you get, if you find fibers itchy at all. Uh, Charlotte was great because she was shorter in the back. She still gave me the coverage I was looking for, but she wasn't hot on my neck, she didn't itch my neck. So 
So either one of these is going to be just fine. It's just personal preference, maybe what you already own, maybe what you find on sale. But that was all it took. Now, if I don't like all this poof, I can do what I did with the headband, with the clips. And all I did was I just started taking some pieces, doing a quick little twist. And these are so tricky for my fingers. They're really tiny. I like the real tiny ones for something like this, but there's every size you could wish for. And then I just clipped them. So I just twisted a few here and there. And this one, again, only has a lace front. It doesn't have any monofilament. That's okay, you can still do styles like this. You won't be able to see the cap. And so just keep doing it until you've got the style you, you like or have eliminated the poof you're looking to eliminate. But that's exactly what I did with Charlotte. I could do one more if I still don't kind of like that extra poof on the side. Seriously, whatever works for you. You can use bobby pins instead of clips. If you don't own any of these kind of clips, but you own a ton of bobby pins because they come with all the wigs that we buy, um, you can use bobby pins, whatever you want to use. Feel free to do whatever works for you. I will also link some of these clips in the description. I highly recommend owning some different sizes, but that's it. I'm all set to go do whatever it is I need to do. I can, um, she actually is long enough that if I wanted to do a little twist in the way back and put a little bit of a bigger clip in and really get her up, I'm in trouble getting that one squeezed. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. How adorable is that? How simple, easy, adorable. And I already feel cooler. I gotta tell you guys, I find headbands on wigs, I do have a video on that, to be a great summer style. And for whatever reason, putting a wig up in a headband is cooler to me. Even though I'm adding an additional layer to my head, it feels cooler. I think just getting those fibers up away from my face, away from my neck, and more concentrated in one area helps a ton. One more thing I didn't do, but what you could do, depending on your bio hair over here, you could just pull out a little bit on the sides, which I had done with Charlotte. I kind of forgot to do that with this one. Um, just pull a little bit of the hair out. I'm trying not to get too much so that you've got a little wispies and then that, depending on where this is situated, that will hide your sideburn hair or the side of the cap. So that's another thing that you can do. If you have a little bit of bio hair, you can blend it. All right, so I'm gonna show you with one more wig, but I wanna say that all the wigs I grabbed right now to show are shorter because that's kind of what I have out right now. That's what I'm wearing. And I have packed away all of my, all my other wigs for the move. We're moving in three weeks. I find this to be way easier to do with shorter, curlier wigs. I think that it's just more forgiving and easier to style. If you're very experienced with styling and you're comfortable playing around with wigs, you could probably use straight wigs and long wigs. I may attempt when I get my wigs out to show this with a long wig, but right now I don't have any to show you. That would be more challenging. Here's why I'd say that's more challenging. There's two areas where that becomes more challenging when you have a long wig. The sides that you leave out and the nape. Leaving out all that long hair is, would look a little odd and so you just have to be comfortable maybe trimming some of that hair. I do have a video where I show putting a wig in an updo and using a razor comb to sort of trim the ends a little, the, like the leave out a little bit so it's wispier and shorter. It should be fine if you're just taking out little bits of baby hairs here and there. Trimming that up for the updo should not impact when you wear the wig down because it's, it's very few fibers and it would be the underneath fibers all over. So I think that would still be okay. So that would just be my recommendation. All right, so let's do the last wig. 
This one is Night by Ellen Villa, and please do not judge Night right now. I have a review of her, and I love her, and I have worn her. I've only had her for like a month, and I think I've worn her 20 times. I'm, I wear her all the time. She desperately needs a wash. Like, she's so... Um, I can just feel it. She feels dirty. I've put product in her. I've worn her with headbands and updos and clips. I wear her all the time. She really needs a wash. But I just want to show you this one as well. So again, you're going to, uh, this one I did a little bit different because she's got some shorter bangs in the front. So this one, when I wore her, um, I didn't pull her all the way over. I actually did it this way. I, I put her over the top. And I just gently, I didn't tighten it as far as I would tighten it, but I tightened it enough that I'll close because as I'm messing with this, I don't want it falling out of the thing. And then I just started pulling out hair. I started with my fingers with this one. And I just started pulling out some hair. So this is another option and kind of tucking this, the bangs in. And then once I get a bunch of hair pulled out, then I'll tighten her up. So I'm just reaching around and I'm pulling out hair from all around. It's loose enough that I can get my fingers in there and really pull out hair. Now this one is a bit straighter and has some shorter layers. You just have to be careful that you don't pull the wig up as you're doing this, which is what I just did. <laughs> so I can feel the ear tab here. I just want to keep that ear tab sort of in place as I'm doing that. It'll just make my life a little bit easier when I go to finish the styling. All right, so then I'm just going to tighten it up more so that it's secure. And so this one automatically has less poof. So you might not need to do anything more with this one. Because she is less poofy. But what I had done, and I didn't quite pull out enough hair on the bottom, but I pulled way more hair out on the underside. And then I just took, and this is one I had put into a smaller claw clip. So I had kind of less hair out on the underside and more hair above the uh, this part of it. And then I put it in a claw clip. Now this is one that's gonna would take me a little bit longer because it's straighter, it's um, less density, so it's a little bit harder for me to get it situated. That's not bad though. For doing it really quickly, that turned out pretty good. So. But that's just the, the third wig I wanted to show you. So again, if you had a longer wig, you could pull some of this bottom part out and then just trim some of it off so it's shorter. I, I really, if you use just little bits, it's not gonna hurt the wig for other styles. But that might give you a little bit of a cooler look in the back, more of a French twist you could do. Again, you can use bobby pins, whatever you wanna do. But now I am set to be spending time outside in the sun. This is going to protect my eyes. It's going to protect my face. I can still wear sunglasses with this, which I did. Um, I've actually done this twice in the last week. I had to go to a, my nephew's baseball game. It was 95 degrees outside and no clouds. It was pretty miserable. I did really well considering how hot it was. This was a lifesaver because it covered my eyes, but it also kind of acts as a sweatband in some ways and just sort of whisk, uh, uh, absorbs my sweat a little bit. So that is my tip Tuesday for you guys. I hope this helped you. Sorry this was so long, but I know for some of you this is really hard and so I like to show everything as much as I can. For those of you who have a lot of experience, you're probably not here anymore, <laughs> but if you are, thank you for staying and watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment if these videos are helpful. Specifically, please comment and subscribe because that helps YouTube to see that I'm doing something valuable in the community and it really helps my channel. 
And if you have suggestions for future videos, let me know what they are. I'll put them on the list. Otherwise, I really appreciate you guys. I hope that you're having a good June and God bless you and I will talk to you soon. Okay, it's super windy. I hope that you'll be able to hear me with the sound of the truck and the wind, but I wanted to show you what is possible with a wig. So I have on just a sun visor and I'm wearing Ellen Villa Night in the color Candy Blonde Rooted, but you can totally do virtually everything that you can do with your bio hair with a wig. You just have to be strategic about it. It works great and nobody's gonna be able to tell. I wish it wasn't so windy so you could see how cute it looks when it's not blown around like crazy, but it is what it is. So I just wanna encourage you, give it a try. Okay guys, here it is uh, Bianca with a visor. So this is Envy Bianca in the color light brown. And it did not, it wasn't easy for me to get her this way. I'll be honest, it took me a while, but then again, I am not the world's greatest hairstylist. So let's just see if I can give you. So the key I found was this, okay, let me go this way. This clip, I clipped the hair up with this and I secured it through the wefting into my baby ponytail that I have. So that's gonna hold this down, the whole back of the wig, and not let it pull, pull it up as I go through the day with this. I did adhere the front of the wig with lace tape, and so between the cap, the clip, and the lace tape, I'm pretty sure this thing is on very secure. Um, but it did take quite a bit of, of messing, and I'm not 100% thrilled with the way that all the messing relaxed all the curl, but I'm going with it, and we'll just see how it goes. So anyway, this is MV Bianca with a visor.